life, and there's no more vivid celebration than the carnival in Brazil. In Sao Paulo, they celebrate the past and the future. But for some Paulistas, carnival is an escape, an escape from the present. Take one face in the crowd. Last year, Geraldo de Souza lost his job in a car factory. His is our first story in life. My name is Geraldo. I worked for six years in this Ford factory here. At the end of last year, or to be more precise, on December the 22nd, I was laid off. They sent a letter to my house. That was my Christmas present. The car industry in Brazil, the experts and bosses tell Geraldo, had suffered from the effect of financial crises in faraway lands. When you have a crisis like in Russia, all the money, foreign money that was in Brazil, was very afraid of what could happen to Brazil. When this money went out, the Brazilian government put very high the interest rate. What happened? People could not buy the car. The production was very small. People like Geraldo will suffer because they don't have work. And so Geraldo took to the streets of the capital, Brasilia, this time not in celebration, but in protest. Here we are. It took us 15 hours to get here. We are demonstrating for our rights as Brazilian citizens, our right to democracy, to employment, to health care and to housing. These are rights and we don't have them here. Geraldo is a victim of what's being called globalization. When we talk about globalization, it means that when businesses look at the world, when they think about where they put their factories, they scan the globe to find the most efficient place to put their factories. And when they look at where they're going to sell their products, they scan the globe uh, to see where that is. One world, technology, free trade and free markets making old national boundaries seem meaningless. But globalization also creates winners and losers, included and excluded. The planet's top three billionaires now own more than the gross national product of its 40 poorest nations. Globalization is a process which is creating untold numbers of losers. There are some who win, but there are more and more who are being left behind. We're going towards a world which will be in the year 2020 a world of 8 billion people, of which I would estimate basically 6 billion will not be included. What happens then? It's a challenge, uh, certainly, to developing countries, but it's also a great opportunity, an opportunity for new markets, an opportunity for investment, opportunity for global services, for knowledge, for health, for education, many aspects of globalization that I think of, I think of very positively. Increasingly, what people are saying is that globalization can mean anything we want it to mean, and that the choice is not between nationalism and globalization. It's, it's that as citizens, as global citizens, we can shape the, the values of, 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 our, of, of this planet that we share. Um, we just haven't had a say yet, and I think we're beginning to. The winners from globalization include once isolated and centrally planned China. Annual growth rate over 20 years, almost 10%. In Shanghai, they count success, just like in the West, in stock market prices. Overall, it's been a remarkable uh, period of, of, of world growth uh, that uh, you know, doesn't have that many other precedents. Globalization has essentially modernized you know, a very large and important part of the third world, which is a good deal of Asia and, and important parts of Latin America. And that uh, is actually, you know, in a way, closing uh, so 